Welcome back to Modern Revelation Digest Podcast. We're, here we are, Megan Dodge Brown and Colin Brown. Um, today we're going to talk about the plan of salvation. Yeah. We wanted to kind of just go over it in general. Um, we know we have some people who are not members of the Church of Jesus Christ and some people that just uh, believe in Christ in general. I wanted to talk about the plan of salvation because there's a lot of crazy things going on in the world. There's a lot of violence and and unfair treatment of people and I think if we if we were able to discuss this then that might give some people hope and help some people out in these really trying times. So uh, the first part of the plan is the pre-existence. That's what we call the life before this life. Um, we believe that we live there as spirits with God. Yeah, it was like a place where it was in heaven, essentially, when we were there with God before we came to earth, but we weren't able to progress any further. We kind of got to a roadblock where we needed to get bodies, and a lot of times our bodies get treated as like something like evil or, or base, but really it's something that is really important for us to grow and to understand earth life better and to understand what it's going to be like after this life. Yeah. We in this the goal of this whole plan is to become like God and God has a body and he is um, an eternal being and so he wanted to allow us to go to earth one day and gain our own bodies and learn how to use them, learn from our mistakes, do things that we couldn't do as spirits. Um, but something else that happened in the pre-existence was that God gave us agency. Um, agency is what we call the ability to choose. Um, yeah. We had the option between two different plans while we were in, in pre-existence. We could either follow the plan that, that Christ and God were presenting, the plan that we're following now of everybody makes decisions for themselves. If you mess up, then you have to seek repentance and try to seek forgiveness from God and do better. Or there was a plan that Satan presented that was he would control everybody's actions. He would direct us all through earth life and get us all back to heaven, but we wouldn't have learned anything. So it would be kind of like a null point. Like there would be no purpose in going to earth if we weren't learning anything. So it was kind of pointless to try and follow Satan's plan. So most of us said we wanted to follow Christ and Jesus uh, and God's plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I like how you said that there would be no point in Satan's plan. He had, Satan just wanted the glory for himself. Um, he wanted to be in charge of everything and he wanted everybody to attribute it to him. Um, but um, in doing that we wouldn't be able to really learn anything. Right. And because of that, those two different plans, that the key point, the key difference between them was the ability to choose. With God's plan, we'd be able to choose things we wanted, and we would get the consequences for them. But with uh, Satan's plan, we wouldn't be able to choose anything, and then we'd all get the same consequence, which was not even a good consequence. Uh, I wanted to share a scripture that says, uh, Wherefore, men are free according to the flesh, and all things are given them which are expedient unto man. And they are free to choose liberty and eternal life through the great mediator of all men, or to choose captivity and death according to the captivity and power of the devil. For he seeketh that all men might be miserable like unto himself. So that is in Second Nephi, which is part of the Book of Mormon. And it talks about how everyone is free according to the flesh. So anything that you can do as a person, as a regular human being, you're allowed to do. But we are, we are also able to choose what consequences we get for that. We can either choose liberty or we can choose captivity and death. So that is choosing the way of the Savior and the way of God or choosing the way of Satan. Because Satan, he hasn't given up on his plan. He, anything that follows Satan's plan to do evil, to, to, to get into vice or, or bad things, he, he traps you with that. He tries to take away your agency like he did in the beginning. He, he's trying the same strategy to be able to control everyone and make them do what he wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when we make better choices, then we have more freedom, really. 
because like you're saying um, we get trapped that's like if if we start lying then we are kind of cornering ourselves we have to keep lying and lying and lying but when we um, are being truthful then we're free because we have nothing to hide really exactly yeah and so um, with that those consequences um, can affect other people and there's a lot of things that we can do here on this earth that um, are not only going to hurt ourselves but hurt others and um, God looks at that and sees that we've done that to another person and he he will count that towards you you know right if we think about what God could have done so Imagine if when we got here on earth, the first person to hurt someone else, God prevented it from happening. He stopped the, the consequence of the, that person's action. It would basically be the same as taking away that person's agency. He's taking away that person's ability to choose for themselves because if they weren't able to choose to hurt other people and then that other person was hurt, then it's the, basically the same as Satan's plan. That nobody gets to do anything, nobody gets to learn from anything and everyone just has to wait and sit and let someone else take care of them. So the purpose of life is to come here and make choices and see the consequences and to learn from those and to accept the consequences that we have. So that is often a question people will have is why does God allow bad things to happen? Why does he let wars and contention and uh, robberies and murder and all these different things, that, that horrible things that can happen to people why does he let them happen is because he doesn't want to take away our ability to choose and he tries and he does fix all these problems eventually mm -hmm. yeah president nelson the president of our church said that god will do anything short of like stepping over the bounds of our agency to help us come back and be with him and so um, he has to respect that our choice he has to respect all of our choices um, because that's the one thing that will help us do I don't know will help us grow and, and actually get something out of this life yeah, yeah exactly um, the reason that Christ came to this earth is to atone for our sins to pay for the things that we've done wrong because if we're going to come here to earth and we're going to make choices and they're going to hurt other people, someone has to pay for that. Someone has to pay these consequences. So Christ, he comes to earth, he lives a perfect life. He lives such a perfect life that he can use that perfection to cover other people's mistakes as long as they follow him. He is so powerful and so good that he can absorb those consequences for himself and take them upon himself like he did when he was crucified and he went through the atonement. Mm -hmm. So God, he has this wonderful plan that anything that we do wrong, as long as we repent and sincerely want to change and follow Christ, it can be atoned for, it can be fixed. And also Christ conquered death. He, he, he was resurrected. He was able to go beyond the grave, he was able to come back and not only be alive again as he was before, but be a perfect being, be someone resurrected, and he opened the door for all of us to do the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Colin, how do you think that um, Adam and Eve felt when, when they realized um, all of the things that were bad that would happen once they had to be cast out of the Garden of Eden? Right. I think they must have been devastated because if you imagine their lives they've just been with God they've been with his amazing presence and everything that they needed was provided for and then all of a sudden all of that was gone all of this this comfort and joy and love and companionship with with God was just completely gone from their lives and they must have felt so hopeless but I know that they learned of, of Christ even in their day they learned of this plan that God has for them I think we can relate to Adam and Eve a lot, that we, we see all this crazy, terrible things happening in the world, and we think, how can this 
what happened? Like, what, what are we supposed to do? Like, things are just getting worse and worse. But just like Adam and Eve fell, and that was part of God's plan for us to come to earth and, and to start families and to be able to progress as human beings, the stuff that's happening today is also part of his plan. It's part of this amazing, all-encompassing plan that God has come up with so that we can return to him and we can be better than we were before, that we can actually progress, that we can be better people than we started out when we were with him in, in uh, pre-existence before we were at our, on earth. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure when Adam and Eve were taught the gospel and how Jesus Christ would come to atone for our sins, that they jumped for joy because mm. because they knew that there would be a, a solution to all of those pains and sorrows and, and death even. Exactly. Um, mm. In Alma 7, 11 to 13, it talks about how um, every type of suffering, even sicknesses, um, like I'm sure disabilities, mm-hmm. everything like that can be aided and mended through the atonement and it's not just um, sin or death but every pain that we have. Right and that's something that I love about our gospel or the, the gospel or our church. We believe that not only will Christ just help us feel better it's not just that he is something hopeful that we can look forward to to get through all these terrible things god has an actual concrete solution to every problem in the world all the pain and death and suffering that goes through the world he will fix everyone who's dead he will resurrect everyone who's been hurt he will heal through christ heal through his atonement every pain and injury and disability and difficulty all of that trauma and, and horrible things that are going on now, he will repair it. It's not going to be permanent. Mm-hmm. And it's so just hopeful to me. I love that. Yeah. And I, I know that a lot of people struggle with um, knowing that God ha- is sad with us while these things happen because they, they want to say that it's his fault that they're happening or, or that he's to blame because he's not stopping them. But um, I know that God does cry with us through our pain and our sorrow and our mournings, and he listens to those prayers, and he really wants to help us, but he really cannot step in to alter someone's agency because he needs to let people be accountable for the things that they do. And... um, I had some experiences on my mission with a few investigators or friends as now people are calling them, (laughs) Um, some friends of mine that had questions about that and um, I just taught them about the gospel of Christ and how he would come back and save us all and help us and um, I know that that's true and that we're not just left to suffer here and that God has um, no solution to his to our problems, but He made every possible solution, like you were saying. Right. Um, one other thing that often gets mentioned that, that God gets accused of being unjust is there are so many people who have never heard of Christ, who have never heard of His atonement, never heard of His life. They they don't have these essential essential information or or ordinances or any of these things that they need to be saved. We know that people need to be baptized to be saved. They need to believe in Christ. They need to follow his his gospel for their whole life. There's so many things that that need to happen for a person to be be a part of this wonderful plan. And what happens to those people who just die and never hear of him? And, And people all across the world that this has happened. We believe that God has a plan for those people too. He, there, there's, a, there's a place after we die, and it's called the spirit world. And it's a place where people go before they're resurrected. It's kind of a, an intermedium. And there are people who have never heard of Christ are able to listen to the gospel, are able to grow and improve. And there they can also 
receive ordinances. They can they can receive things like baptism and confirmation from the Holy Ghost. And we do this through the power of temples. That's why um, in this church we're so uh, excited about temples and about family history because we, we need all their information and all their, their, their work done in those temples so that they can be they can have these blessings of being baptized and having the Holy Ghost to be with them at all times. Yeah. Those things are necessary for us to really feel the fullness of the love and have all the blessings that God has for us. We can still feel it and we can still have blessings without them, but we'll be that much closer to Him if we make commitments to Him. Did you have anything else you wanted to say about that? Uh, no, I just... I, I think that is just the the most fair and amazing way he, like God could have come up with something like that. It's just such an amazing plan because no matter what happened on this earth, if someone wasn't able to hear about Christ here, they still have a chance. They still have the ability to to make covenants to him and promise that they will follow him and receive all these blessings of the atonement. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so that leads us to the resurrection. Right. So, in the resurrection, um, there's some scriptures that say something like, not a hair will be lost, and so that means that every part of you will come back to be your body, and God will reorganize all that matter so that you can have your body again. And right. um, everybody will have the opportunity to be resurrected, no matter what they believe, no matter what they did uh, during their life, they all can be resurrected. Yeah, the, it is incredible that, that Christ has overcome death so that anything that has happened here on earth can be fixed. That through the resurrection and the atonement, all of the, the consequences that we've talked about before, all of the actions that other people have done are able to be repaired and people are able to be healed and, and brought back to life and brought back to something better than just life we have on, on earth here. We are able to be something more, something more celestial and close to God and, and become like Him and follow Christ in every way. Yeah. And when we talk about becoming like God, that means that we can become a God too. He wants us to inherit everything that He has and not just dwell forever with Him, but to be able to do everything that He can do too. Right. Okay. Um, what if we just make it like 20 minutes? How much is it? It's like eighteen fifty right now. Okay. What else can we see at the end? Um <laughs> We've talked about it a lot. I feel like it's good. Yeah. I don't know what else we can say. Do you have any personal experiences or people you taught that were really affected by the plan of salvation? I just have my own testimony of it, I think. I could just mention that and talk about how I believe that. Okay. I'll say that. Okay. Yeah. I feel so comforted that God has a plan for us. He has been with us from the beginning, from the very first person here on earth, and He's with us till the end and, and beyond. He, nothing has surprised Him. Nothing has been a shock or a revelation or anything unexpected in, in this world. And it, even if it's something terrible, even there's things that go wrong, to us we think they're going wrong, but God knows that these things will happen. There's a reason that they happen. There's a reason He, he doesn't stop bad things from happening. It's a part of our earthly experience. They're, they're required. And once we get through this, once we have come back to Him, everything will be healed, everything will be fixed, everything has been planned for and prepared for, and God has a method of fixing every problem and every hurt or pain that has ever occurred here on earth. I have a friend that uh, I met on my mission that couldn't walk. He got paralyzed, and um, he would just shuffle his legs with his crutches to church, and we helped him eventually get a uh, wheelchair, and he was an inspiration to me, and 
I know that one day he will be able to have his body restored and he will be able to walk in and run and play with his children and it'll be beautiful. <laughs> and it also makes me think about my family members who have passed away, who I miss very much. And I know that we will be able to hug again and that they're here with us, alongside us, and they're helping us in every decision we make. And so the plan really does comfort me about those things. And we thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs> thank and you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for listening, and please comment below any thoughts or experiences you've had about um, how the plan of salvation has helped you in your life and please like and subscribe because it helps with the algorithm <laughs> <laughs> anyway thank you bye bye bye